everyone, thanks for tuning in for part two of TriHack Me Sock Level 1, where we go over the TriHack Me module that's gonna get you that sock analyst position. So without further ado, let's get into the Pyramid of Pain. Pyramid of Pain. This is a concept I wasn't really familiar with until I got into here, but apparently it's well-renowned. It's a concept applied by Cisco Security Sentinel-1 and Sock Radar. Sock Radar is a very helpful place to learn. Just another site that you can go to. So add that to your list of uh, bookmarks. Understanding the Pyramid of Pain, is important. You'll see that in this section, you really start to get into the, the in-depth concepts that you need to know that you'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. I check hash values like 10, 15 times a day. They're not on their own a very good indicator. And if you see my red team, blue team video, then you'll know that that's what got me in trouble. And just because it's signed by Microsoft does not mean that someone can't maliciously inject something into that process. And that hash is still gonna be green unchanged. But you can watch that video if you wanna find out about that. So see, it kind of explains to you what these hashes are. They just use different hashing algorithms designed by different places. NIST is a concept that you should be well familiar with in this field. A hash is not considered cryptographically secure if two files have the same hash value. Um, it's easy to flip a bit in a file, and that's how malicious actors can change their malware to, you know, get past really old antivirus, which old antivirus used to use just hashes and indicators like hashes, where it's easy to change stuff like that. So that's why they had to start creating AI driven and behavior based antivirus. So here you have a question, analyze the report with the hash. You'll click the link, it'll take you to this virus total, which is very commonly used. You'll see the vendors on the top there, 37 out of 59 flagged it. And below when you put in a hash, it'll tell you the name that is associated with that hash. Enter that name there, hit the button, it'll say correct. Good job, you now know how to use virus total. And moving on to IPs. You may have learned the importance from what is the networking room. Well, you should go do that room right now before you complete this. Here you'll see a snippet of a tool that I use very often as well at my current position called AnyRun, and it lets you put an IP, a URL, a file, and it lets you run it in a sandbox, and you don't have to worry about downloading malware to your computer. And then of course, Malicious actors can always change their IP addresses, so this is not a, a great way of detecting for malicious indicators. It's just one of many. So what IP address does the process PID 1632 have? Well, you want to click that button there. This is the sample they're going to be referring to. And if you scroll down, uh, you're going to want to go to Network Connections, File Activity, Network Activity. You'll see here, Process 1632. It's communicating with this IP, 58.7. You want to put 58.7.13652. Boom, you got the answer. What is the domain name this malicious process attempts to communicate with? Same thing, go to the network activity, connections. You get the process, the PID, the IP, and then right here you have the domain, which is the DNS query that it is trying to communicate with. And it's crafting a legacy.com. These are important artifacts that helps you build Intel. That way you can create a detection or just look in your environment for these malicious indicators. So now moving on to domain names, you'll see domain names can be thought of as simply mapping an IP address to a string of text. So if you don't know what DNS is, then you better learn quick because it's very important. You have all these different URLs you can visit, uh, top level domain, and then you can also learn about DNS in the DNS in detail room. So again, there's different modules in TriHackMe that lets you do a deep dive into all these concepts that I think is invaluable and will put you ahead of the rest. Can you spot anything malicious? There's no dot in the eye. This is an example of a Punicode attack. So what is Punicode? You can click this link. It gives you information on what Punicode is. Uh, basically, it's it's a way of converting words that cannot be written in ASCII and a Unicode ASCII encoding, effectively making Adidas.de without that dot in the eye, uh, HTTP, XN, dash, dash, all that there. All these browsers are pretty good at translating of obfuscated characters. Attackers usually hide malicious domains in URL shorteners. I've encountered most of these in my current position in a lot of phishing emails, bit.ly especially, and that's the one that they use down here. You see tinyrel, bit.ly, but let's go through the questions here, go to the report. This will let you see a report in any run, and it's asking, provide the first malicious URL request you're seeing. So when you first go in here, you wanna click into connections and you see all the connections it made, and you'll see at the top, it made a first connection, craftinglegacy.com. You'll click there, that'll let you copy it. Then you just copy paste it in there, move on to the next one what term refers to an address used to access websites domain name of course you should know that from reading the above section what type of attacks use new code characters and domain names to imitate the, the known domain a punicode attack of course i just learned that 
provided the redirected website for the shortened URL using a preview. Now this thing, I was unsure of, and I still am unsure of, I probably won't ever do this outside of Try Hack Me. Apparently, if you put a plus, it'll say that it explains this in the text, and you hit enter, it takes you to a preview. And the preview is basically a way of seeing where a URL goes without actually going to the URL. This makes me a little on edge because I don't like clicking links or going to URLs and hitting enter. It just kind of goes against everything I've, I've learned up till now. But regardless, that's what it wants you to do. And then it'll ask for this effective URL, which you'll enter and you'll move on. Host artifacts. The host artifacts you'll see here are traces, observables that attackers leave on the system. Registry values, suspicious process execution, attack patterns or IOCs, file drops, and anything exclusive to the current threats. This looks like a list of processes. Files modified dropped by the malicious actor. Is PowerShell there? Security vendor has analyzed the sample for us. Review the report here. I noticed that this link, you have to right click and hit open in a new tab, otherwise it just closes out your current tab. But this is the analysis from any run. Um, you'll hit complete there. A process named regidle exe makes a post request to an IP address on port 8080. What is the IP address? Well, if you go to the report, and you do this handy dandy find tool, hit 8080, which is what we're looking for. It'll immediately take you to the regidle.exe post, and it's looking for this IP address, 96126.1016. So you enter that, move on to the next one. The actor drops a malicious executable. What is the name of this executable? Going back to here, you want to go to dropped files, files activity, because it's asking what files did it drop. So if you go to executables, there's only two executables dropped in this report, and they're all related to this, g underscore j jug k dot exe. So you enter that. Look at this report on virus total. How many vendors determine this post to be malicious? This number here corresponds to the amount of vendors and all these red things here that are vendors that flagged it as malicious. So this is the nine total vendors that flagged it. And again, this is all stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, it's very common. Moving on to network artifacts. Network artifacts can be detected in Wireshark PCAPs, files that contain packets of data. If you haven't used Wireshark before, you can download it now. Start it up, start typing URLs and visiting websites, and, and it'll start picking up traffic, and you can go into those and analyze it and give you a taste of what that's about. This one uses T-Shark to filter out the user agent strings, and this is specifically for the Emotet download or Trojan, which I haven't heard before because there's a lot of viruses. Questions what browser uses the user agent string shown in the screen above. Now, when I first saw this, I thought Mozilla Firefox, like that's where my mind always went. But to confirm, you'll want to take the user agent string, copy it, and then you'll go to a tab and just search it. What browser is, and then type in the user agent string. As you'll see here, actually all versions of Internet Exploder, which I thought that was just perfect, whoever made this, Good job. So, in fact, it's not Firefox, it's Internet Explorer. Good to know, right? How many post requests are in the screenshot from the PCAP file? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the HTTP post requests containing suspicious strings. That's what it's asking for. Put in six, get the correct answer, and move on. Congratulations, we made it to the challenging part. Attacker will most likely give up trying to break into your network and go back, yeah. If I ever see Steeler or Payload on my computer, I'm re-imaging, I'm shutting it off the network, I'm I'm wiping clean because that, and then Russian Panda, add that to the mix. Yeah, this, you're, you're, you, it's a burn it, burn it all. As you can see here, just like in all the other sections, they give you links to all these helpful sites. Sock Prime Threat Marketplace is a tool that I currently use in my promotion and it allows me to look at different detection rules, how they're made, and how I can make my own rules. Add that to your bookmark list as well. Down to the questions, provide the method used to determine similarity between files. So you wanna read through all these, by the way. I'm skipping through this, but you'll see here fuzzy hashing is just a way to detect when somebody changes the hash value as a means of going past your antivirus, and it'll detect that and be like, this is the same file, they just change it slightly. And then provide the alternate name for fuzzy hashes without the abbreviation. Well they're asking for you to go into this link. And here you'll see SSDeep is a program for computing context triggered piecewise hashes. And that's the abbreviation that they're referring to. And then we can move on. Not over yet, but good news. The final stage is the apex of the pyramid is TTPs, tactic, techniques, and procedures. Here we'll see the MITRE attack matrix, which I use on a day-to-day -day basis. It is a framework for the tactics that all hackers use 
uh, more or less, to break into your system. And the techniques below these tactics, all these drop downs, top you'll see are tactics, the drop downs below are techniques used to achieve the tactic. So for execution, if they want to execute something on your system, they'll do a scheduled task and it'll execute and that's how they are able to execute stuff. Or lateral movement, they'll use alternate authentication material to move laterally. So now, navigate to the attack matrix webpage. How many techniques fall under the exfiltration category? Um, so you go to exfiltration, there's nine there. You'll hit a nine. Chimera, which I haven't heard of before, is a Chinese-based hacking group that's been around since 2018. So what you'll want to do is go in here, search Chimera, wait a hot minute for it to load. You want to look up C2 Beacon. And then as you can see there, Enterprise Tactic 1041 Exfiltration, and it uses Cobalt Strike. If you're not familiar with Cobalt Strike, a lot of links in here, it, commercial full-featured remote access tool. And then that's pretty much it. You just learned the Pyramid of Pain, and uh, you'll want to go to here and you'll want to ignore it completely because I spent 20 minutes doing this. It's wrong. It'll say, whoops, you're wrong every single time, no matter what you do. And <laughs> I learned the hard way because I went to Reddit and everybody else was just as angry as I was. And it turns out they just have never fixed it. So you'll hit, hit complete here. It'll let you move on. Conclusion, now you've learned the concept and then it leaves you with this inspirational quote. David Blanco says, the amount of pain you cause an adversary depends on the types of indicators you were able to make use of. So this is just all to teach you how to go about indicators. And that's kind of the most important part of a SOC position is knowing your indicators. All right, and so that's the first two modules of the SOC level one. You'll have to subscribe to the monthly fee to complete anything further beyond the first two. But in my opinion, the monthly fee, it seems worth it for the amount of knowledge that you're getting. But if subscribing isn't an option right now, then you'll have my videos still to watch. If you're like me, then learning hands-on is a little bit better. I'd recommend subscribing if you can. I know that the first two are really dense with like top level concepts, but if you look into every section within this module, you'll see that there are concepts that I probably need to brush up on too. And it is invaluable things for you to learn. There's cyber threat intelligence, the uh, Yara, which, which is the threat coding that I'm using right now. There's MISP, which is a threat intel sharing platform. There's Snort, there's Brim, there's Wireshark. It goes into Sys internal, Sysmon, which is just a lot of logging security information management, so SIEM tools, it really dives deep into those. So again, I recommend getting a subscription if you can. If not, don't worry about it. You'll have my videos to watch, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm sorry if this video was a little bit long. The section was a little bit long. It's a little dense, maybe a little bit boring. I try to make it a little interesting by explaining how it applies into my current position, but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.